What's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over my render settings that I personally use and I'm going to show you a bunch of tips, 19 or 20 tips, on how to get faster renders in Blender. A lot of you guys have asked me about this, so let's go ahead and hop into tip number one. Okay guys, so the very first thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually upgrade to the latest version of Blender so that you have all the features available that we're gonna be talking about during this tutorial. As of now, the latest version is 3.4. So go ahead and upgrade and let's move on to step two. The second thing that you can do to make your renders faster is invest in a faster computer, a faster GPU, and faster processing power. Now I know that this is expensive, so if you can't afford this, let's go ahead and move on to the additional steps. So we're in our template scene here. I'm just gonna show you guys a quick preview. I'm gonna zoom out here. We have our HDRI and our materials. This is a nice little abstract scene that I set up. And as you can see, I'm in the Cycles Render Engine. Now, on the right-hand side, you're going to see some options right here. You're going to see CPU and GPU. If you have a GPU, make sure you have that selected. That will run far faster than a CPU. So that's the third thing that I wanted to cover in order to get faster renders. You wanna use your GPU. It is going to be much faster than your CPU. Number four, you wanna go ahead and head over to Edit Preferences, and in your System Preferences, you'll see some options up here. Make sure you either have CUDA or Optics enabled. Optics is typically faster, and it pairs very well with your GeForce RTX card. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Optics. If you guys don't have Optics available, you're gonna to wanna to choose CUDA. All right, let's go ahead and move on to step five. So over on the right-hand side, under our render settings, you wanna pop this tab open. By default, it should be 4096. That is Blender's default sample count. You do not need that many samples almost ever. So I'm gonna go ahead and start low at 100, and I'm gonna work my way up as I go. Another thing you wanna consider is turning on denoising so that you can actually get away with less samples. For example, if you use 50 samples with denoising, it'll probably look just as good as 300 samples without denoising. So denoising is crucial in getting that final render quality. And it allows you to get less samples and lower render time. So definitely consider using that. Number six is a little trick I learned from another tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that now. You're gonna have your noise threshold on the right hand side here. Go ahead and click on that and it might be at a low value like 0.001 and we're gonna actually change that to 0.1 which is gonna significantly reduce your render time. For number seven, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the time limit. Now this is a very interesting feature that I don't use much in Blender but you can if you choose to do so. Right under your max samples, you'll see something called time limit. Now you can basically set the time limit of each frame. However, when you do this, Blender will probably reduce the quality depending on what time limit you choose. For example, if we choose two seconds, you're probably gonna end up with a crappy render. But if you really are on a time crunch, you can actually experiment with this time limit and set it to your desired outcome. So for my case, I'm gonna aim to get my renders under 15 seconds. So this will out automatically make Blender say, hey, if it's been 15 seconds, you're done rendering, we're done and then it'll complete your image for you. However, you can sacrifice quality when you do this, so be really, really careful with this feature. Number eight, we have our light path settings. Now, these are really, really interesting because you can really experiment with these to get different results. I'm gonna scroll down on my right-hand side and you'll see something called light paths. If you don't, go ahead and click the drop-down and click on max bounces. Now, under here, you'll have something like 15 or 12 at the top. Um, you want to reduce these as much as possible. For example, if you don't have anything transparent or transmissive in your scene, you can turn those values to zero. If you don't have any volumetrics, which I do not in this scene, I'm gonna change this from three to zero. Now, once you have everything the way you like it, you'll see your render changing in real time as long as you're on the rendered preview in the viewport. Adjust these settings to your liking. Once you see something you like and they're low as possible, you wanna add them all up to this total up here. I'm gonna change these all to two and we're gonna see how they affect the scene. So let's go ahead and bump all these down to two. And as you can see, they don't affect our scene too much. One, two, three, four. We're gonna go ahead and give ourselves a total of eight. And as you can see, this is what you get right here. So guys, you're gonna to wanna to play with these and get them as low as possible while still maintaining a quality render. So basically this is where you get to decide what you wanna turn lower, what you wanna turn higher based on what you think looks good. So this is more of an opinionated part, but the lower that these are, generally speaking, the lower your render time will be. Since we're on the light path topic, I'm gonna move on to number nine, which is our light path uh, caustics. So if you go under here, you're gonna see two things automatically checked, and that is gonna be reflective and refractive caustics. 
Now, if you're not using caustics in your scene, which I'm not, I'm gonna disable both of those and that should also reduce your render time. The next thing we wanna consider for number 10 is your resolution. By default, Blender has 1920 by 1080 as your resolution. Go ahead and change that to whatever you'd like. For example, if we wanna do Instagram square, we'll do 1080 by 1080. The larger your picture size for your render image, usually the longer your render will take. So consider that while you're creating your images. So for number 11, persistent data. Definitely wanna go ahead and check that on. If you guys can't find that, it's right under the performance tab, under your scene settings, under final render. Go ahead and click on persistent data. And basically what that's gonna do is kind of jog Blender's memory so that when it goes to render something for a second time around, it remembers all your textures and everything about your scene. So as long as you have, haven't changed anything in your scene, you should be good to go and Blender will go ahead and remember those things and it will render faster. For number 12, we're gonna head back over to our light path settings. Now under light path, you might've noticed something called fast GI approximation. And basically what that is, is very similar to Eevee. Blender will kind of more or less fake the lighting to determine the final render. You can click that, but let's go ahead and click that and see what the difference looks like. You might not notice much of a difference. I do just a little bit because I can see my 4K monitor right in front of my face here. If you click that and you don't notice much of a difference, your render more than likely will automatically be faster when you enable that setting. Number 13 is modifiers. So I wanna talk about modifiers because they could significantly slow down your render. Now for perfect example, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my sphere here. You're gonna notice on the right hand side, I actually have a subdivision surface modifier on there. And for the render, I have two levels. So I could turn that down and I would probably see a significant decrease in my render time. But just be really careful because it can also drastically reduce your results for your quality. For example, if I zoom in here on the sphere, and I reduce our render, our levels, you're gonna see it's much more of a shaky edge. I'm looking for that smooth edge result, so I'm gonna keep my modifiers on there. Usually the less you have, the less render has, or sorry, the less Blender has to calculate for the final render. So consider removing some modifiers or finding a better way to model your objects to reduce the amount of work that Blender has to do on its end. Number 14, I wanna to talk to you about compositing. This is just an extra step that Blender has to do in order to complete your final image or your final animation. So I'm gonna head over to the compositing tab and I have nodes in here right now for denoising and lens distortion. And to be honest, I don't really need those right now for this render. So I'm gonna check off of use nodes and now we won't use any of these nodes for our final render. Blender has one less step to take in order to complete that final image, thus reducing your render time significantly. Number 15 is you actually wanna pause your viewport or put it in solid mode while you're rendering. Now, let me show you what I mean. On the top right, you probably notice this little pause button. If you click on that, Blender will stop looking at the viewport and trying to show you the highest quality image based on your current preferences. And when you actually go to render, now Blender is only handling the render, whereas before it would be trying to handle the viewport and the render at the same time. So basically you're just saying, hey Blender, just focus on the render, don't worry about the viewport right now. Now an alternative to this will just be to click on solid mode and then you go and render your image. This will significantly reduce your render time. Now for number 16 on our list, I wanna talk about textures. So for example, image textures for an object or HDRI image textures. So in this case, our HDRI, I believe is either 4K or 2K. You do not need to go overboard with this. The same goes for image textures. You really don't wanna go ahead and add a 16K texture to your image or to your background environment. It's just not necessary and most of the time you're not gonna notice the quality difference. So when it comes to image textures, either don't use them or lower the quality of them significantly, you're probably gonna get just as good of a render result while saving on processing power. Number 17, avoid materials with complex node setups. For example, my free crystal shader that I offer on YouTube. This is an extremely complex node setup, which is extremely taxing on the computer. So the simpler your materials are, more or less, the faster your render time will be. All right, and finally, for number 18, close all of your other programs. It might sound like common sense, but I've seen it before. People have multiple programs running. You have Photoshop, you have Premiere, you have Blender. Let your PC just focus on Blender. And lastly, to add on to that, minimize Blender when you're rendering. It will significantly reduce your render time, just trust me. So go ahead and minimize Blender next time you render, close out of all your other programs, and you should be good to go. Now with all of these tips combined, you should significantly see your render time go down. 
Well, guys, that wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed all these awesome render settings, tips, and tricks. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel, like, comment, and go ahead and follow me on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. I post content on all three platforms. I hope to see you in the next tutorial.